Good morning and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. I am your host, Krista Burns, here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Uh, Encompass Live is the commission's, um, we call it our weekly online event. We are a webinar, a webcast, an online show. Um, as I say repeatedly, the, the terminology is up for debate, um, but whatever um, you want to call us, we are a sh live here every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time, live online with our show. Um, but if you're unable to join us on Wednesday mornings, that's fine. We do record the show every week, so if you are unable to watch us live, jo to join us live, you can always go to our website and watch recordings of all of our previous shows. And at the end of this session today, I will go over and I'll show you our website and where you can see all of those previous recordings. Uh, we post up the recording. We post up if anyone, as you can see here, has any presentations, slides, handouts, anything related to their show. Um, and we do collect any links that are mentioned, any URLs, and have them um, posted up there as well so you have a nice uh, one-stop shopping for anything related to the recording. Um, we do a mixture of things here on the show, uh, book reviews, interviews, mini training sessions, demos. Uh, basically, our only our, our only a criteria is if it's library related in some way, we'll have it on. We'll put it on the show. Um, we do have Nebraska Library Commission staff sometimes come on and do presentations for things um, that are specific to here, but we also bring in guest speakers, and that's what we have this morning. Um, on the line with us is Ann um, Matsky. Is that, did I pronounce that right? I'm sorry, I never asked. Yes, you did. Awesome. Okay. <laughs> and, um, well, I know wishes. Where, where are you, where, what would you be, you're like, what are you doing now, Ann? I know previously you were at uh, Wilson Public Library here in Nebraska, but I know you are no longer there. That's correct. So. <clears throat> um, I was the children's director for five years, and right now um, I'm involved in a couple of different ventures. I'm actually a writer, and I'm pursuing that. I have some books that have been published, and so I'm writing full time. Ooh, nice. um, and I, yeah, and so I'm doing that, but I'm also involved in a, a couple other ventures. So, um, you know, they always make the comment when you retire. Uh, you find that you're busier than when you were working, and it seems to be really true. <laughs> yes, it is definitely. Uh, since my my parents have my mother has retired, I can never get in touch with her. <laughs> So, um, so great. Um, but Anne does have does have done this presentation at um, our previous uh, Nebraska Library Association and School Media Library Association School Librarians Conference last fall about this new category of um, fiction, um, new adult fiction, something sort of young adult, sort of adult. We're not really sure, and that's what we're going to figure out today, I guess. You're going to tell us what exactly it is that we're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, and you what, know, it is we're, what it is we're reading, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> Good thought there. Yeah. Um, you know, it's, it's a topic that I've been interested in for oh, a couple of years. Um, you know, I started to see articles that were being uh, talking about new adult. I saw blogs referring to new adult fiction. Uh, even saw it identified in book catalogs and um, was really kind of interested. It just piqued my interest to know what is this and, mm -hmm. you know, how do we define it and who are our readers and uh, where do we shelve it and just all those things that we think about from a library perspective. Um, so that's what we're going to do a little bit um, right now. So Great. Um, but let's go ahead and look at, you know, young adult literature. Um, it's something that we're all really familiar with. Uh, and as I was putting this presentation together, I found that the definition first appeared in 1968. So, you know what, it's been around for a while. Um, and we know that our protagonist is a young um, adult, you know, starting about age 12, which is what we could technically say is the end of um, childhood, up to about 18, which is really kind of on that brink of being an adult. Um, often books are written in first person, you know, and I think that um, they also use a language that is so typical for the reader. You know, if we think about Meg um, Cabot's The Princess Diaries, you know, it's a good example of how language is used, and it's truly a YA. You know, Mia speaks like, you know, any other adolescent girl, and her language displays, you know, the typical adolescent spunk and self-consciousness and excitement over things that, you know, probably really won't matter to her in a couple of years. And so we have to kind of um, realize that that is their world. Um, they're also dealing with adult issues and um, 
you know, we can think of some of our classics like Gary Paulson's Hatchet. You know, it's actually a tale of survival, but it also talks about how Brian feels about his parents getting divorced. Um, and then there's also Lauren Anderson's Speak, which is one of my favorites. Uh, but you have Melinda wondering, you know, why, why are her parents still together? All they seem to do is constantly quarrel. Um, but we also see that within young adult literature, we see the protagonist who is rebellious um, towards authority. And one that uh, quickly comes to mind would be like The Golden Compass by Philip Pullman, um, where Lyra defies the adults, and she actually goes up against even more powerful adults in her quest to save the children from the gobblers. Um, often in young adult literature, there's that sexual awakening, that first crush, um, that first kiss. Um, and then we've seen, you know, some of the young adult novels that go a little bit further than that. But for the most part, um, our protagonist con continues to exist within those confines, um, that structure of rules that, that the family has and that school has. And for the most part, you know, Young adult literature tries to leave um, the reader with a sense of hope at the end of the story. So if we take it from there and we look um, a little bit deeper and, and we think about uh, young adult literature, um, you know, it's exploded over the last few years. It's just, you know, come into the, to the scene with, you know, great books that um, we know kind of there are not necessarily clear boundaries for, um, and there are specific themes that go with it. Um, there are also um, just the fact that the text is there, um, you know, not for the reader so much. It's it's that the reader is there to pick the book, and what we're also seeing in this area is that the adults um, are reading YA. We've got quite a following um, who would actually prefer to read a young adult book than an adult book. But let's talk back. Let's go back a little bit. And let's talk about the history of um, new adult. And what we can do is we can look to the publishing industry. Um, if we looked at some of the things that were starting to appear um, around. Um, Oh, 2009, 2010. Um, Rachel Deal is the news director for Publishers Weekly, and she really felt that you know here is this huge market for YA, um, but a lot of the readers were beginning to age out. Um, they were no longer in that category of 12 to 18, and you know here they had this whole market, and they were po potentially going to lose some of that readership, and so editors started to get concerned about that. And they were also concerned about trying to hold on to those adult readers who were reading down. So there definitely was a dilemma um, within the publishing industry. And then about 2009, um, what we found was that Dan Weiss, who is um, the St. Martin's Press, he's an editor there, he came up with the idea. He wanted to see more manuscripts being submitted by writers that had to do with that next step in a reader's life. You know, we had the young adult established, but what happened when the new these readers and these even these protagonists got to be 18? What was going to be happening in their lives? And so he basically put together a contest and he was hoping that writers would submit manuscripts, manuscripts that would target, you know, that emerging adult. Um, you know, the the kid who had graduated from high school and was going off to college, um, the kid who had graduated from high school and was seeking a, a, a new job, um, you know, what was what were they doing to navigate their career? You know, how did love play into that? You know, were they living at home? Were they living on their own? Um, but what he really wanted too was to find manuscripts that had characters that were in that 24/7 connected technology world. And to be really honest with you, I don't know what happened um, with the contest. I don't know if it was successful, um, but I want to believe that it was um, because shortly after that we saw this huge explosion of a new type of literature. So let's look at a definition for new adult. New adult um, fiction is a, a developing, I'm going to say, area of fiction. Um, with the protagonist, you know, who falls in that age range of being about 18 to 25 years of age, 
but you also occasionally will see a protagonist who is age 30. So, you know, they're really kind of stretching that um, concept of what a new adult is. So roughly 18 on the brink all the way to 30 um, does fit. And basically what it, they're looking for is um, exploring what it means to be an adult. So it's that I'm on the brink of adulthood, I'm no longer a teenager, I'm moving from one type of lifestyle to a different one. So what types of issues does that bring up? So let's look at some of the characteristics <clears throat> of new adult literature. Well, we know first of all that the protagonist is older, and we just said about 18 to 30. Um, there are other adults present because there can be the boss, the professor, um, there's a whole new realm of adults that are going to be involved with that protagonist's life. We're also finding that they are definitely more sexually graphic um, and that romance is the core of many of these books. Um, often they're written in first person, kind of like our um, young adult. And we also find that the new adult protagonist is much more self-aware than the YA protagonist. Um, the protagonist is responsible for themselves. They're more independent. They have bigger issues of a place to live, a car payment, a job, um, all of those types of things. Um, and romance is truly key. And what you're finding is that the male characters um, in these novels are often very hot with lots of tattoos. Um, but another characteristic of our new adult literature is that the story leaves the reader with a sense of hope, much like our young adult novels. So you're going to see that there are some similarities to the two groups, um, and then also there are some very specific differences. So let's talk a little bit about some possible themes. Uh, as I mentioned, you know, here we have our protagonist who is um, moving away from home possibly, so they have the whole concept of college life as a theme. Um, it could be a first time living alone, you know, acquiring an apartment, um, maybe even living with another person that they haven't done before, a roommate. Um, it could be a first job. It could be even after college is over and they're launching themselves into a, um, a first job, a first career. Um, definitely first serious relationships. That is key. Uh, that you're going to find in just about every um, NA adult or new adult novel. Um, identity issues. You know, here they are. They're out on their own. And, you know, who are they? And what do they believe in? and what are their interests, and um, who are they identifying with. Also, you've got the theme of sex, something that they have um, maybe not experienced before, it's a first time experience, or it's something that um, fully consumes them. You've got experimentation as a theme, which could be sex and alcohol, drugs, so you've got that whole realm opening up to them. Um, struggle to find themselves. You know, they are pretty much defined by their family and their rules in adult novels, but as you move into the new adult category, there's this real struggle to find who they are and what they're about. Um, and change is definitely a theme. Um, you sign, can see that in just even some of the other themes that have been listed. Um, change is huge. How they change, how their world changes, how their relationships change, um, all of that uh, can be kind of in that category. Um, but also money problems. Here they face, you know, they were dependent upon parents possibly for some funding, and now all of a sudden you see themes where money is an issue. They've got to support themselves. They've got to pay the electric bill. They've got to uh, buy things but also pay for their, their bills. So you've got that as a possible thing. So you can see that this whole area of new adult is very rich um, in topics and themes that are going to just permeate um, the stories. Well, you know what? Let's take a little look at who are the authors of some of these books. And this is what I found to be very interesting when I first started out um, kind of investigating or exploring it. Um, because what you're finding is that the new adult authors are young themselves, 
often they are 20 somethings themselves. Um, Cora Carmack, you know, she's become a, be a New York Times bestselling author. And I love what she says. You know, as a 20 something myself, I know my generation lives in a time of extraordinary change. Um, we are a generation marked by a marriage between dream big idealism and the unavoidable stark realism. You know, new adult acknowledges that unique perspective. So I think what we're seeing is that these indie authors are bringing their own personal experiences to their writing, and they're not very far away from it. Um, many of them are actually living it as they're writing it, um, which I think in many ways makes many of these books so compelling, and you can see why they appeal to the audience that they're written for. So let's take a little look at some of those that have come on board. Um, and we definitely see a very strong emerging indie authors. You know, in 2011, line self-published The Vincent Boys and the sequel, The Vincent Brothers. And she did these online. So these were e-books. And their popularity took off. And she was selling and doing quite well online. And interestingly enough, Simon Schuster and some of the publishers started to take notice. Who were these people that were self-publishing? What were these books that they were self-publishing that are selling like gangbusters? So basically, Simon and Schuster came to Abbey and they acquired both of those books that they then published under their imprint, Simon Pulse, which is a young adult imprint, and they republished them in December of 2012. So this was a real first in publishing um, because, you know, the general kind of, you know, history then you write a, a, a book, you send it to an editor, you wait to see if the editor is even interested. If they are, they'll respond. Um, and everything is in the publisher's perspective. They are the ones that are in control. But what we started to see happening with this whole NA field is that the authors were becoming the people in control. And they were doing things differently than what had been done before. And Abby Glines was just the beginning. If we look at Cora Carmack, you know, she started in the exact same way. Here she was, she was e-publishing and she had um, put a book out there and all of a sudden, again, the publishers were taking notice. They were the ones that were coming to the authors. They were the ones that were offering, like in Cora's um, situation, a six-figure contract for three books. That's pretty unheard of. And, you know, and then printing the books um, and they took off. And so, again, you know, very young author, selling um, more than one book, which is, again, um, unusual in the publishing industry. And here she had a three-book deal, and she signed a six-figure contract. Um, and that was in November of 2012. So if we look a little bit at our ebook history, and if we look at the shares, the unit sales, look at where fiction is. It's heads above all the other categories academic, nonfiction, religion, juvenile, and scientific. I mean, there is, this, in 2012, this spurt. There is this huge growth. It's a momentum that is growing. Um, and it's not, um, and it's by the independents. I mean, it's not necessarily by the publishing companies. It's by those young indie authors going out, writing their books, putting them online, and selling them themselves. So we're still talking about this whole digital format. So let's look for a minute here. What we're finding is that the new adult novels are reaching a much wider audience in digital format. And <clears throat> Rose Hilliard, who's an editor at St. Martin's Press, said this, which I thought was so interesting. Those who read on devices, Kindles, um, whatever, seem more concerned with intense, immediate action and have less patience for the subtlety, texture, and nuance and descriptive language, which is really the qualities that work much better in print. Um, and so 
here you've got, again, a new trend. You've got books that are being published by very young authors. They're e-books. Um, they're more intense. Um, they have immediate action. Um, you don't have all of the flowery language, and you don't have the time that's taken to create the subtleties or the texture. Um, and it's, it's groundbreaking, because that's what is selling. So let's talk about the elements of success. You know, we've got independent ebook publishing, and it's really driving. This is what is driving the whole uh, new adult category and its growth. And what we're finding is that, you know, the online venues are encouraging it. They're encouraging the authors and the novels, um, where in the past, um, you know, if the same writers were submitting manuscripts to publishers, um, I truly wonder if there would have been the response, um, you know, if the publishing company would have really taken a step in this direction. Um, I kind of doubt it. I think that for the most part, like it says here, that they were shut out of those regular markets, that regular um, pathway to publishing. And because they created it on their own, that and e-published, that's really what drove um, the whole area of, of new adult. So let's talk a little bit about how they promoted their books. Um, and I found this really interesting. We had a, a patron who came into our library and she had written um, a three book trilogy. She had self-published it and she wanted to do a book signing. And, um, you know, as I sat and talked to her, what I found was she was so connected. She had a whole community of readers already that she had done through social media. She was tweeting. She had a Facebook page. She had, and it was an author Facebook page. Um, her words, her books were being uh, supported and encouraged by word of mouth. You know, there were other people who had blogs who were um, blogging about her book and about her book tour. And she did an online book tour. Um, she had gotten hooked up with Goodreads. But she also had gone through. Um, what they called a newer co-op website, which was New Adult Alley or NA Alley. Um, and so all of those things, she was promoting her book in that way. And they were savvy. Um, they were not your traditional, you know, let's send a postcard out because we have this new book that's being released. Um, it was really immediate. And she was getting the response from her community about her books. And that's what was driving her sales. And her sales were doing really well. And, you know, I kept thinking as we were talking, gosh, I haven't seen these titles in some of my book magazines. I, you know, and that was my first indication that the way that these authors were promoting their books was so uniquely different. Um, and just a real quick note on N.A. Alley. I was on um, earlier this week, and I found that it has actually changed its name, and it has evolved. And so what really made me think about book promotion, too, was that, you know, New Adult has forced book promoting to evolve. It's evolved to a different place and a different way of um, disseminating information, of collecting a community of readers, um, and it's exciting. I mean, if anything, I have found that the new adult area is just a vibrant, um, pulsing um, area, category of, of books. So here are, um, very quickly, just some of what we would consider to be the core new adult books that have been published. Um, you've got Abby Glines, um, you've got Jamie McGuire, who actually has just recently released a third book in that series. You've got Cora Carmack with her Losing It series. Um, you have Colleen Hoover, um, who has Hopeless and um, in that area. You've got Jay Crono, Crown Over, um, his Marked Men series, and you've got Tamara Weber. And so these tend to be what you find as the core uh, new adult books. Um, and some of them were the very first that were published. Well, you know, I was curious. You know, this is kind of the core. So what I did um, in preparing for this is I went to find out, I went to Goodreads to find out what were the top five 
um, new adult titles that were being read this week. And what I found was, um, you know, and there's actually more than five. I just um, couldn't, like, stop with five. So, um, But what I found so interesting was Jamie McGuire is still on that list from being one of the very first in our core uh, group of NA books. But look at Colleen Hoover. She has three books this week that are all being read. Never Never, which then she's collaborated uh, with Taryn Fisher. Um, then you've got November 9. Uh, you also have Confess. Um, so she is making a real presence in new adult titles. Um, and I think you see the same thing from Jamie McGuire um, and a few of the others. So as I was saying, NA Alley uh, was a website and it has a blog and had a lot of information on new adult um, literature. Uh, and when I prepared this presentation for the Nebraska Library, um, Association meeting, this is what was trending at that time, and that Jamie McGuire um, had just announced a groundbreaking distribution deal for indie publishing, and this was huge. Um, here she was, she had self published several books on her own, and now she was able to take her, her books. Um, for the very first time to the big brick and mortar superstores and specifically Walmart to have her books sold there. You know, this used to be something in the past that publishing companies would take care of. They would take care of where your books were placed. They would take care of um, even if your books went to like a Barnes and Noble, you know, the books that face out on the shelf. Um, they pay more for that. Publishing companies pay more for that. And so here was this indie author who was making this deal um, because of her own you know, her career and where she's gotten into. And so this was just huge at the time. Um, and this has only been a few months ago. Um, so you don't, I don't see new adult peaking or um, you know, plateauing. I see that they are you know, uh, accelerating. They're, they're going beyond maybe what has been achieved in uh, marketing and promoting um, books from a publishing industry in the past. But you know, New Adult is not without its own controversy. And I think we have to talk a little bit about that. Um, you know, there was a lot of public criticism because um, Fifty Shades of Grey could technically fall within this new adult category. Uh, a lot of people were saying it was sexed up YA, um, you know, and that it was really marketed on the whole concept that they were wanting to um, entice teens to read more erotic material. Um, and we all have our, our thoughts on that. Um, but I think what's interesting at this juncture is to look at what some of the people in the industry, publishing industry, are saying. You know, like Sarah Megabo, she's an agent with Nelson Literary Agency, and, and she tends to disagree. She's saying that, you know, when she gets manuscripts through her, um, across her desk, what she is seeing in the way of submissions for books that fall within that category of new adult is that they are really good, that their conflicts um, are more about early adulthood, about dating and jobs and getting that first apartment, you know, landing that first job, um, having money on your own for the first time, you know, who are you as an adult, um, are you able to be self-sufficient? And so basically I've, I've heard from other people in the industry that, you know, Fifty Shades of Grey may have just been a kind of a um, an occurrence on its own, but to try to group it in um, to new adult um, is not where everybody's saying that it should go. But um, but again, you know, here's a little controversy. Here's something to discuss. Here's something you know that your patrons can give you some insight on, or you know, as a library staff, you can talk about it. Um, you know, and how it fits, you know, if it has some of the true themes and characteristics of new adult, uh, or is it kind of, uh, you know, an entity of its own. So. so let's look at who is actually reading um, new adult. You know, and I went to a couple other libraries to 
from an article in Booklist to find out what other librarians were saying. Um, you know, what they're finding is that readers tend to be urbanites and they're wired. They're techno savvy. They're up on, on trends. Um, they're cultural and politically social issues that they are looking at. Um, they're checking out the books, you know, because maybe they have an edgier content. They've got zippy plots. They have um, identifiable characters, characters who stand out, characters who they can relate to, characters who might be within their same age. Um, but also some unusual narrative structures, which I thought was interesting. And then also from Illinois, uh, you've got, and I thought this was interesting, new adult books are circulating very well, but, you know, also for the adults who are under 40, um, but not so much for the 20 to 30 year olds, but it's appealing more to those who are probably, you know, reading the romance novels that might be, um, you know, under 50, but they're typically romance readers. You know, so you've got, to me, two different areas. You've got those that are, you know, really kind of um, up on the social scene and the trending with different things um, and they're techno savvy and, uh, wired and connected to technology, and then you've kind of got the romance readers, a little bit softer readers who um, are kind of maybe coming over and, and finding that this is a new area um, with, with books that they're really enjoying. Well, then I went to, you know, I kind of looked at that. I looked at what other libraries were saying, and I was curious to know about our own patrons. What were our patrons saying? And um, so what I did is I just did a little informal survey um, and just asked as books were coming back to find out kind of, you know, what their feel was for the book. And it was interesting because what I found was that they wanted to read um, about those first time experiences, what it was like to live alone, what was it like to land that big job to, you know, to interview and um, to prepare for a career and then get that job? And also about making friends. Um, you know, a lot of them, a couple, well, not a lot, a couple of them commented that, you know, um, what was it going to be like when they moved away, when they went to college, when they uh, got that big job in the big city, or that maybe they went to a different city for a job. Um, so the, those were things that they were hoping to find in the new adult books, um, but I thought it was so funny because <laughs> they also were talking about the fact that, you know, the book really did focus on, oh my God, hot guys, and just look at the book covers. Um, so there was a little bit of both, you know, there was something that they were wanting, but there was also the reality of, of what the story was about. Um, and then I found this second quote to be just really interesting. Um, you know, the patron said, I like the premise of these books, but it's frustrating because the characters are all white. There's not enough diversity of characters and genres for me, which I thought was interesting. And I went back and I looked at the covers of those core NA books and at new ones that were coming out on Goodreads in different places, and she's right. The characters tend to be white. Um, so I think, you know, if nothing else, that's encouraging for this category because there is a much room and growth to include um, other cultures and some diversity within it. <clears throat> so then we would need to look a little bit about young adult versus new adult. You know, um, the borders are really blurry. You know, there's no hard, fast line to say you know, this is YA and this is NA, There's, there is that blur. Um, and there are books that cross over. And I think it's interesting because if you look specifically at YA fantasy, sci-fi, and historical fiction, these books that have already been written cross up nicely to new adult. And one of them that comes to mind for me immediately is um, Jennifer Donnelly's A Northern Light. You know, if you think about her main character, 16-year-old Maddie Gookie, you know, here she is, she's living on her own, um, she's supporting herself, and, you know, just for the fact that within that historical fiction category, she is a teen character, but, um, you know, the age of maturity is measured differently. Um, and so, you know, technically you could say, you know, a Northern Light could potentially be a new adult novel. Um, or, you know, here's the reverse of that. Or are new adults marketed as YA? 
you know, are we going to see that some of those main characters in New Adult are going to be just on the edge? Maybe they're 17. Um, you know, maybe they are 17 and they're living on their own for reasons, uh, you know, that have happened to them and they have to support themselves. Um, but, you know, then there's those elements, um, you know, that we talked about the characteristics, experimentation and uh, sex and some of those things. So, you know, I think, um, I guess what I'm saying is new adult is not been clearly defined. There's just not that, um, you know, distinct definition between the two. And then that brings up the whole concept of crossover. You know, we've got our Alice Award, um, you know, and that those are books that appeal to, um, or adult books that appeal to younger readers, ages 12 through 18, and some of those have more adult characters in them. Um, and so then, you know, how do you, how do you identify those? Are they new adult? Are they adult? Um, and so you've got that whole concept that we could discuss and debate for some time. <clears throat> so where do we shelve NA? And this is my question that I'm posing to all of you. Um, I'd love to hear some of your comments about, um, you know, in your own library, where do you choose to shelve Yay. NA? Yeah, if anyone um, has any thoughts, ideas about this, uh, go ahead and type it into the question section, and we'll see what, you know, if you guys have been, I guess, dealing with the same um, issue of what is it, <laughs> what do we do with it. Um, we do have one question from someone, um, Anne, who asked when you're talking about what what is new adult, really what it, what it entails. Um, are there somewhat defined subgenres within New Adult, or is it pretty much restricted to just the topics you were mentioning? That that's all well, that's usually in you know it entails. You know, I um, <clears throat> no, there are. You're beginning to see some fantasy New A. Um, there are New Adult. You're also being able to see some historical fiction New A. Um, or New Adult. So yes, definitely there are um, there are genres that are, are beginning. It's beginning to expand. I don't think that it is so defined yet that I think there's lots of um, wiggle room and we're going to see lots of other books coming in that are going to be under that category. Mm -hmm. and it's like you said with the, the um, what appears to be not very much um, diversity in the era and it's, it's very new. As you said, was it 2009 was when that contest was, I believe, oh, for right. the name of it. Um, there's lots of room that it may end up developing into the, that type of area that it it needs that it needs. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And you know, I just think even with Abby Glines coming out in 2011, you know, that's not that many years ago. Um, and I think the other thing we tend to forget on the library side is that um, when a manuscript is submitted and accepted by a publisher, it's a minimum of two years before it's published. Wow. And so, you know. There's a lot that happens, and so, you know, if you think about it, this is 2016. Books that were submitted and accepted in 2014 are just coming out. So I think with our whole move for more diverse books, again, you're going to see this area of new adult just exploding. I think that there's, you know, great things coming. Mm -hmm. Okay. Does anybody have any ideas about where you would um, shelve this kind of um, title if you have it in your library? Or if you have any of those authors, um, tell us, where did you put them? Go ahead and type into the questions section if you do. And while we're waiting, somebody did ask about getting copies of the slides. Um, afterwards, when we do the when we put the recording up, um, Anne, would, would, do you have a link that we'll, you post your slides at or send them to me or... Do you have a preference? You know what? I can just send them to you. Okay. So the slides will be available afterwards, yes. Um, but I am also grabbing links, um, some of the articles you mentioned that are out there um, as well for people. Um, let's see. We do have some comments. Um, someone says they have a self-published shelf that displays the books to catch our patrons' interest. So they actually put a specific category of self-publishing, which could actually cover anything. Yeah. Um, not just the new adult, but... Um, that's an interesting idea. Yeah, here's everything self-published. Um, 
Someone says all of theirs just seem to be in the young adult section. Uh, someone else says they put Sarah Moss in the in the YA section. So that's where it seems to be falling towards. Um, someone else says they don't know, and they're looking to see if Overdrive maybe has created a category for it. If within Overdrive there is um, is has new adult new adult been set up as a category? Mm -hmm. okay. Does anybody know? Mm -hmm. Someone else says we put them in the YA section and let the teens discover them. Yeah. Does anybody um, put them in the romance area? Do you have, if you have a romance area, is that where you put some mm. of them? Because you said they seem to be very much leaning towards that a lot in there. Yep, exactly. Uh, Does anybody have romance sections that they're still putting things into? Nobody is saying. Maybe they don't. <laughs> <laughs> Seems to be falling mostly into the young adult, it looks like, for most of the people the people that did comment, yeah. Okay. All right. Oh, wait, well, someone was typing something long. That's why. Okay. Um, just... In my last library, there wasn't a large enough collection, so it was being divided up, divided up between young adult and adult, mostly on a judgment call from the cataloging librarian, um, which wasn't which wasn't ideal in the long run. But our community wasn't really at a point of being aware of the category or asking for it yet. Okay. That, that's a good thing to a good comment, a good observation as well. Like because it's so new, does anybody even know that it's a genre they could look for? Right, exactly, and that actually then leads into my next slide. How do we promote these books? Right. Um, now, when someone says they got rid of their genre sections about seven years ago and haven't gone back, so they don't even categorize things that way anymore. <laughs> oh, there you go. <laughs> and that's the way to go. <laughs> do it totally different. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So what are some ideas? Now that you've had some time to think about new adult, um, how, would you, how might you promote it in your library for your patrons? Um, yeah, so anybody have any ideas of what you do? Obviously, some people, uh, someone did say they put it in the young adult and let the teens discover it, which is fine. Um, and we do know that not just teens read both young adult books. Lots of it. Right. I do. There's lots of them I've read that I think are awesome. Um, anybody can read any, anybody does read any genre or any we categorize it as something, but like the library that says we don't even do genres anymore. Eh, anybody can read anything. Um, someone else does say this is the first time they've ever heard about new adult fiction, so they're going to have to work on that, I guess. Um, does anybody have any ideas or thoughts about how we could promote it? What would you guys do to try and get people more interested in it? Oh, here's something. More adults seem to go to the YA section to look for these types of books, so that's where they're putting them. Adults oh. reading this type know that they like to read what's been categorized as young adult, so that's where they go to find more of the type of book that they like. Okay. Yep, and she says exactly. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, they know what they're looking for, so that's mm -hmm. where they're going to go to. Is there, here's a question, is there a different... Well, I guess it's been categorized, it's, the, the, the terminology has been used as, as new adult fiction, so that does kind of take it, potentially take it, separate it, does gonna, you know, differentiate it from youth books. Is, is there maybe a reason we should rename it something else so people don't think that it's just, because some people also have that um, preconceived notion of YA novels, I'm a grown-up, I don't read those. Mm -hmm. But maybe they should be. <laughs> Well, and, you know, and I think this is, we're really still um, at a, a juncture where we can talk about, um, you know, is the, the uh, new adult title appropriate? Mm -hmm. um, or how should it be, you know, um, identified? Um, I, you know, I think there's lots of room for conversation about this. Mm -hmm. um, I like the idea that, you know, some libraries are putting it in or near their new their young adult section because, you know, for people who are re already reading young adult, you know, it's kind of like that aging out thing. They're just um, transitioning to the next step, mm -hmm. to the next level. Um, 
you know, I often worry if you put them like just with romance, you know, that they get lost. Um, you know, so it's um, it's an interesting question to ponder. It is similar to romance, but I think it's got more. There's more stuff going on in it than traditionally in a romance. All of the other exactly. features of it that you mentioned. Um, kind of, you can think of young adult books as a gateway into the new adult, and like you said, you move uh-huh. them over there. <laughs> um, we do have some comments coming about this, though. Um, we have a college in this town, and the college age patrons make a beeline for the YA to find this stuff. So that's just, I think, because it's new, they don't they assume it's going to be in there. Um, mm-hmm. We first put the books in the new book area and then move them to young adult. So it's just uh-huh. here's anything new we have all together. Yep. Um, we could make a special display to draw them to the new genre, maybe also with bookmarks to explain the difference. That's a good thing to explain how yeah, this is right. not the same as what you might have. And someone says, um, I'm, go- um, I'm going to buy some of the authors you mentioned and see if there's any interest and put them out on display for a while. Just put this is the person who so they'd never heard of this um, genre before. So yeah, just put them out there on any sort of and here's some of the new things and see if, see who grabs them. Great idea. Um, and somebody who has a question wants to know, and this is also an idea as well. Does anybody have programming or book clubs at their library for this category? You've got your children's book groups, your adult book groups, whatever do one that is focuses on this. Has anybody gotten into that? The same person says also many of these also cross genre lines as well, so it is hard to <sighs> label, I suppose, yeah. Mm-hmm. So is there anything out there, Anne, about um, programming specifically for this that you've seen or book clubs focused in this area? You know, when I presented um, in October, um, we had a lot of discussion. What we did is we just kind of went down the rows and people would give ideas. And um, Mm -hmm. some of the top things were like a book display, um, Mm -hmm. like the bookmark where you define on one side what why it is and give some examples. And on the back side, you do new adult and give some examples. Mm -hmm. Um, Definitely the book displays were talked about. Um, also doing some things if you have like a newsletter or a blog with connected with your library where you mm-hmm. uh, talk about one of the authors, you know, um, like Colleen Hoover who's just exploded on the scene and um, do a little background about who the author is. You know, I think um, what's intriguing is the fact that so many of these authors are very young and, you know, how did they get their start? Um, and what's interesting too is that um, I forgot to mention in the on the NA Alley, they've actually converted that to a place where if you're interested in writing new adult, there are some guidelines and some different resources for writers, which I thought was extremely interesting. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, so I think um, it's not only new for us as librarians, um, but it's also new for the public. And so, how do you, you know, kind of um, Show that you know. I think book discussion groups would be great. Mm-hmm. I don't remember that one coming up. Um, you know, you'd have to kind of look to see, you know, if there are any reader guides that have been developed for some of these books, um, or you know, do an online, you know, do something creative online. Uh, if we have a book club, um, you know, where you post questions and people respond, you know, something that would match kind of the tech savvy and the edginess of, you know, um, the people who are coming to it and reading, you know, something like that. Mm-hmm. I'm just brainstorming. But. Oh, yeah. All right. Doesn't look like there are any other ideas being thrown out, so. <laughs> okay. Well, in conclusion, um, you know, here are just some questions to ponder. You know, do we need a new adult category? You know, and does a category serve the writer or the readers? And will it continue to exist mainly as romance, you know, or are we seeing a shift where, you know, we're seeing some subgenres of, uh, you know, fantasy and sci-fi and different things? Um, and will writers feel a need to write um, non-romance new adult? So just some questions to think about as you continue forward. <laughs> 
Uh, yeah, that would be interesting to have if, if because if the not some people may be well if it's not their thing turned off by as you said it seemed to be a lot of romance um, might not be turned off by that but it might like some of the other things that are in there and just not realize it that mm-hmm. there's more to it it's not your traditional stereotypical uh, romance right. novel. Right. Um, oh, here's a good question. Um, how do you take a, a, your older books and incorporate them into a new category? Is there mainly are there are there possibly some older titles that exist that we didn't realize could be in this? Well, you know that's why I thought of a Northern Light um, because it seems to fit some of those you know guidelines for new A, um, but it's you know, it's been around, um, and it's the Prince, you know, honor book. Um, so I think, yes, you know, going back and looking at your collection, looking at some of the classics, I think you'll find that many of them could, and I don't want to say cross over, but could be identified, um, you know, and may not have, may not be heavy on the romance side, but fit into all those other things of being independent and getting a job and living on your own, supporting yourself, that, um, that are, you know, within the category. So, yes, I think there definitely are. Something as reader's advisor we need to think about. Yeah, have we read something that... Exactly. Yeah. All right. So does anybody have any other questions <clears throat> for Anne or thoughts of your own about the topic? Um, answering any of these questions here? Any of your ideas, thoughts or ideas? Or those of you who have encountered this, how you've, um, if you thought about these things? Because uh, we do have about five minutes left, you can type in your questions. We can answer any of them. Um, as I said, I've been collecting the um, links that you've been mentioning. I've got the NA Alley here, which I did notice too when I went to the site. They have changed the. Looks like last October they changed the name of it. Um, is what yeah. the idea was. Um, to next lit, which is an interesting concept. Um. And they're you know, actually talking about upper YA. Yeah. Um, you know, it's, and then new adult and select adult titles. Uh huh. So, so it's that's almost a whole kind of other bad. category. Upper <laughs> upper young adult. <laughs> Great. Right. Yeah. Um oh, this is a good thing. Um do you know anywhere where there's um a place where there's a good a list of core titles in um new adult? Or places you know, where I you think, can get lists. Uh, Right. I think I ended up, the slide that is in here that has kind of the core, um, I believe came from the article that may be posted at the bottom or um, even on uh, Amazon or Goodreads. And I just, I think I just Googled or searched for, you know, core NA titles. Mm -hmm. Because you said some of the authors were actually using Goodreads to promote their stuff, so that would possibly be something they, if they know that's the genre, they've mentioned that as this is what my book is. Right, right. Yeah. And Nebraska Access, too. I know I went through um, a while back and just tried to look to see what was, you know, available through the fiction when, when the new. Uh, mm hmm. It was revamped. And someone does pose the question, and I had mentioned this earlier too, that um, they think I think the young adult title may be young adult title may be a little confusing to people, and that's kind of what the purpose of this is. What could be a better way of describing it <clears throat> for the new adult? Yeah, new adult. Did I say that wrong? Yeah. <laughs> I think the way the best way to describe it is to look at that one slide that had the the definition. You know, it's mm-hmm. that next category of life, you know, when we talk about de- development, you know, you get to adolescence and you get to adulthood, and it's that kind of narrow window between, it's that transition place between uh, the adult, or the teenage years and the adult years, mm-hmm. and it's those things that, that you know, people are encountering um, that really is truly what the, the books are about, you know, it's that it's a transition from being a teenager and dependent to being an adult and being independent. Mm-hmm. And I think it's, but, it's, it's an educational, it's an education that 
issue needs to be out there. And someone just has commented on that exactly, saying, um, the category name can definitely be confusing to introduce and promote at times because a lot of patrons thought we meant new books available in the adult <laughs> section. <laughs> so every time we talked about new adult, they would go over to the new release shelves and not realize that it was actually a category. And um, she says, I just, I guess it, it's just something that pe it will take time for people to come to understand. And that's true. It's going to need the promotion and the education and just doing the bookmarks and the flyers that explains what it's talking about and for people to, you know, you know, get it in their heads. Yeah. Well, and it would be interesting <clears throat> if people would brainstorm what would be a better terminology for it. You know, what would be a different way to refer to it? Um, I would just love to see that, you know, what people would come up with. Because you're right. New adult can be very confusing. Uh, oh, adult. here's one. Someone said one of their college patrons called it 20-something lit. Okay. There uh, you go. I'll suggest, uh, suggest emerging adults lit. Uh-huh. Awesome. And someone said that I call it stepping up. That's another one. Yep. I like the twenty somethings emerging. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to think. What do you call when I mean what do we call the people that are just past eighteen but not really adult? There there's that whole middle ground and it, it is a weird time in life anyways. <laughs> um someone says actually they actually thought that's what this webinar was about was new books in adult fiction. Um but she's glad to find out that it's actually a genre and that's the person who said they're gonna look for more titles in this and put them in their library and see if they get some traction on it, so that's awesome. great. Yeah. So I just have a question. Do you have any suggestions for good action adventure titles in this era? Oh. Yeah. Light might lean you know, more towards that that side. Yeah. Um, you know, um, I'm struggling off the top of my head. No. Uh, you know, I think that they all kind of have, you know, um, I shouldn't say all, but I would say that quite a few do have that kind of um, edginess that, immediacy, and not that that's adventure, but, um, you know, I think that's, I think that you'd have to probably explore it a little bit and just see what's out there. Um, mm. One thing I couldn't find before the presentation was to find out how many, you know, like a number of new adults that are being published each year, each year and that I couldn't find, because I was just curious, because I mm. thought, you know, if it's exploding like they're saying, it would be nice to be able to say, you know, there's, you know, 5,000 title, new titles this year or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, but I was not able to find that. I think it's just because it is still new, so new you have to kind of... Right. Are the publishers even putting it in that genre or are they still lumping it into the, the YA themselves? Well, some of them are actually making imprints that are trick, strictly just new adult. Oh, okay. Um, you know, Simon Polk, the YA one, and so I think you have to look. I think that, um, uh, don't quote me, but I want to say, I think Harper Collins has a new imprint that is more new adult. Um, and I think Random House, but you'll have to do some searching yeah, on that. Is. You can, sure you can search and find. Someone does have a suggestion for the person who asked about an adventure, um, action adventure. Um, Court of Thorns and Roses, maybe? Um, yeah. She hasn't read it yet, but most Sarah Moss books have a good amount of action and adventure. So that might be an author to look into that leans more that way. All right, we just hit 11 o'clock, 11.01. Oops. Um, so I think we can wrap up. Um, anyone have any last-minute urgent questions or things they want to mention? Um, someone did say, um, instead of saying the end to this presentation, it should be to be continued because <laughs> we still need to figure out what we're doing with it and what it is. <laughs> Um, and someone does say they have read A Court of Thorns and Roses, and it definitely is. They agree it is action adventure, so that'd be a good one to go for. Great. Well, thanks All for right. sharing that. That's awesome. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you so much, and I'm glad we got you on the show to talk about this. This is a, um, like I said, I have read some young adult stuff as well. Um, I also do lean more towards, as you had mentioned, um, just personally, fantasy and sci fi and that kind of thing. Uh, some of the young adult titles I read, they can be too young for me, I think. I like the storyline, but this might be something from I, that I'm going to start looking into myself because it might be just a little bit above that I that for my personal preference that I might be into. So I'm going to start looking through some of your looking for some of your titles. 
um, that you suggested. Cool. All right. So thank you very much, um, Anne. Thank you, everyone, for attending this morning. I am going to pull back presenter control to my screen now. Um, waiting for it to come up. And here, as you can see, I said I was collecting the links and things. We use Delicious to collect our uh, websites. So you see I've got the things that you had mentioned here linked in Ayali and a couple of um, the articles you mentioned and the Yelso Awards. So if you want more information, that'll be there. Um, this will be on our website. As I said, we are just finishing up recording. And if you go to our Encompass Live website, you just have to Google Encompass Live and it will come up in your first search results. We apparently the only thing called that is awesome. Um, and right here beneath our upcoming sessions, we have a link to our archives. This has our archives of all of our shows going back to when we first started this in 2009. So you can go back and see, watch anything you want. And we would have, um, just like this is last week's, the recording will be here on our YouTube channel. We'll put up the slides on SlideShare and all of those links that I saved will be here as well. Um, but that could be should be available sometime later today. It depends on how long it takes for um, all the processing and editing of the um, recording itself to go. Um, I hope you'll join us next week when our topic is Modern Pathfinders, Creating Better Research Guides. Um, Jason Puckett, who's from Georgia State University, has um, written a new book about doing um, using um, live guides or lib guides, depending on how you want. Maybe we'll find out exactly how you're supposed to pronounce that, um, and other systems um, to create research guides online. And he's going to come next week and talk to us about how you can um, – best practices for doing that and how to um, really get that going at your library. Um, so I hope you join us for that and any of our other upcoming shows we have listed here. You can see the ones we have come up for the next month and moving into April as well. Also, if you are on Facebook, Encompass Live does have a Facebook page. So if you can pop over there using the link off of our website, you can um, like us. And we post notices there. Um, here I post a reminder this morning about that uh, you can log in to um, today's show. When our recordings are available, I post a link on here. Here's one from the previous one. So if you are a big Facebook user, do go ahead and like us over there and you'll get the notifications, um, updates and things about Encompass Live. Other than that, thank you very much for attending and we'll see you next time on Encompass Live. Bye-bye.